Hello there, welcome back. Thank you for joining me on the Hair Platform. This is the Hair Platform. And a special welcome to all our new subscribers. You're welcome to the conversation. So in the last video, I talked about courage and um, we said that courage is doing something even when you're afraid. We concluded that courage comes from the inside and you have to leverage your past success. You have to leverage your inner strength and you also have to remember to leverage the relationships around you. You have to leverage the wisdom and the strength and the intelligence that comes from the relationship around you. And one foundation of courage is clarity. In the last two videos, we, we spoke to clarity and we referred um, to how God said, let there be lights. Because clarity um, makes things clear. And when things are clear, it is easier to find the courage to pursue it when there is clarity. So in the last two videos, we've talked about clarity. The last time we talked about courage. And today, still focusing on that Genesis 1-1. As you can see, I can write a whole book on Genesis 1-1. While still focusing on Genesis 1-1, we're going to talk, talk on consistency. Consistency. The heart of performing or doing something in a similar manner. Being able to perform or do something in a similar manner. That is consistency. Consistency is not an act. It's not something that you just act out. It takes practice. It takes process to be able to get to a consistent level. So when you talk about consistency, a good example that comes to my mind is how God showed consistency in Genesis 1.1. Still going back to that Genesis 1, we saw how God in the beginning said, let there be light. And when there was light, God said, let's separate the light from darkness. Because that light exists in darkness. The, the, the appearance of light doesn't mean that darkness is going to disappear. The appearance of courage doesn't mean that fear is going to dis disappear. So, so you want to continue to think around it that God decided in that Genesis 1-1 to separate the light from the darkness. So he called the light day and he called the darkness night. And from the separation of the day and the night, God said that's day one. God introduced time. As, I, as I'm beginning to walk you through the creation story, I want you to pay attention to the process. I want you to pay attention to the timing, the steps, I want you to pay attention to the details and I want you to pay attention to the cues. Also, keep in mind that there are patterns here because consistency takes understanding the process. So on day one, God separated the light from the darkness and that was day one. And on day two, God said, let us separate the, the sky. And that was how God separated the sky and that was day two. Think about day two as your second data point. That was God's second data point. He created the sky. And on day three, God said, let there be some stars and the lights in the sky. And then on day four, God said, let us separate the land from the sea. And why God separated the land from the sea? He also introduced the animals, the sea animals, like the fish and all that, into it. After day one, God didn't take a break. He moved on to day two. After day two, God didn't take a break. He moved on to day three, and then day four, and then day five, and then day six, when God created the animals and also God created human. Consistency is in the process. When you understand a process so well that you can replicate it easily, that is consistency. Consistency is the art or the quality of performing something in a similar manner. We saw God perform it in a similar manner on day one, in a similar manner on day two, in a similar manner on day three, four, five, six, and on day seven, God rested. Not because he was tired. 
but because it was done. Consistency is performing something in a similar manner. And when it comes to consistency, there are several things to pay attention to. The first thing is the process. So you want to think about what exactly is your goal. That process is a function of time. Because, because it's a function of time, you can easily break the goal down into several steps. So everything that God was doing in Genesis 1 was broken down into several steps, into several days. God set time because every step has its own measurement metrics. Every step introduced something to be done. And the process continues until it gets to perfection. I want you to know that um, getting to consistency or getting something to a consistent state, it takes practice and practice and practice. The practice is part of the process. And that practice is going to come with the good, the bad, and the ugly. There are times that you are going to, to make the, 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 the cake and it doesn't taste anything close to what you made yesterday. It is part of the process. The good, the bad, the ugly, they are all part of the process. God didn't stop on day one. He didn't stop on day two or day three. He continued. Because consistency is continuity. You continue to practice and practice. A sage once said that amateurs, they practice until they get it right. But professionals, they practice until they don't get it wrong. I want you to know that God is consistent and you as a child of God has to be consistent. You want to get to a place where you are very predictable, either in your products, either in your content, either in your actions or even in the way you do things. When you are consistent, people can easily trust you. They can easily predict how you are going to behave or how you are going to react. And even God can depend on you because he knows how you're going to react. Remember, in the book of Genesis, God said something about Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. I know Abraham because he's going to teach his children my law. Are you consistent enough to be trusted? Because consistency breeds trust. And when it comes to consistency, there are several things to pay attention to because Getting to that level where you continue to have the result that is very, very similar, it takes process. It is a dynamic process. And you want to continue to learn. And as you learn, you are iterating on the process. So you are not going to get to that steady state. I'm using so many economic terms here. You're not going to get to that state of equilibrium at once. It's going to take time. And there are several things that we'll be talking about on the app platform that will involve time because it is about process. When you're talking about how, it is about process. And it's going to take some time for you to begin to, to see the result that you desire. But staying consistently and working towards that goal is how you get to that result. And when it comes to consistency, you have to be willing to learn from your mistakes. Think of an example. You brought a baby from the hospital, the first night, you didn't sleep because the baby didn't sleep. You were tired the next morning, the baby was cranky. You did that for a couple of days and then you got an idea. Maybe I should wipe the baby's body with some towel around the night when it's time to get the baby to bed. Maybe I should try to change the diaper. Maybe I should try to feed the baby and bop the baby several times and feed the baby again and bop the baby again and feed the baby again and bop the baby and then put the baby to bed and quickly get myself to bed. And then after the third or the fourth week, you try that and it worked. And then the following week, by the sixth week, you're beginning to have a pattern. And then you have a sleeping schedule, a sleeping pattern that you have. And then you continue to walk towards it and that become a recipe for you raising your baby. That is how consistency works. It is in the process. You have to learn to understand the, the data points. The data points sometimes are not always good. 
It's going to be good, sometimes bad, sometimes ugly. But you are picking lesson from it. Even from your failures, you are learning from it. The day that the baby didn't let you sleep, you are learning from that. What are we learning from here? When it comes to consistency, there are several things to pay attention to. First, you want to pay attention to the process. You want to understand the process so well that you are able to define the steps that gets you to your desirable goal. You want to understand the process so well that you, you know the timing and the sequence of event that leads to your desirable goal. You want to understand the process so well that you understand the cues that will lead to the next action to be followed. You want to understand the process so well that you understand timing, the time within the process. You want to understand the process so well that you pay attention to the environment the environment that deliver the desirable results. You want to understand the process so well that you want to pay attention to the system. Okay, so I've talked about paying attention to the process, paying attention to the timing, paying attention to the steps, paying attention to the environment, to the patterns, and then to the system. Because when you pay attention to the details, the details within that process, the details within that process, when you pay attention to it, you master your game. When you pay attention to the process, you are able to define the timing. When you pay attention to the steps, you are able to define your actions. When you pay attention to the cues, you are able to respond correctly. When you pay attention to the environment, you are able to define your system. There is a system for anything. Success as a system. Wealth as a system. Do anything correctly as system that surrounds it. And being able to understand the system, the process, the timing, the steps, and the patterns and the cue is how you continue to get to your consistent level. Like I said, consistency takes practice. You want to practice it over and over until you get to that consistency. The story that comes to my mind talking about consistency is in the book of Genesis. Um, Genesis, I think, um, 30, there, talking about Isaac. Isaac served Laban for about 20 years. During that process, he had married two of Laban's daughters, um, Rachel and Leah. He had acquired kids, but not so much wealth. And then Laban approached Isaac because he knew God had blessed him because of the presence of Isaac. Oh, I mean, not Isaac, I mean Jacob. Because of the presence of Jacob, he knew God had blessed him. So he approached Jacob and he asked him, what can I do? I want you to stay with me. Jacob said, I have to prepare for my own house. I have to prepare for my own home. I can't continue to serve you. And they reached a deal. And the deal was that, Every animal babies, every young animal babies, anyone that is speckled will belong to Jacob and anyone that is clean and plain goes to Laban. And Laban said, yes, this is a fantastic deal. Jacob, on the other hand, had paid attention to the process. He had been with the animals several times. He had worked with the animals. He understand the timing of their mating. He understand how their reproductive system works. He understand how the animals feed. He understand how the animal behave around their mating period. So what did Jacob did? Jacob got a stick, painted the stick, made this stripe, and put it around the water. Very, very scientific. But that is a recipe that can easily be replicated because it is a product of a process that has consistently delivered a recipe. And Jacob made the animals, whenever they are mating, to cross over that striped stick. And whenever the animals, when they deliver their young, it comes out speckled, spotted. And that result continued to work for him because he consistently mastered the process. As you go, I want you to know that consistency is and art. It takes mastery. And I want you to understand that 
This is the beginning of the conversation. We're still going to continue with the lesson on consistency. Thank you for joining me on the Help Platform. This is the Help Platform.